Hello there. Uh, welcome to the talk. Um, this is about working in the open, and we're part of Open Search. Some quick introductions. Who are we? So I'll start. My name is Charlotte Hinkle, and I have been with Amazon for 14 years, which means in dog years I am dead. Uh, before that, I worked for writing software for a bunch of different federal contracts, and then before that, I worked for the University of Chicago. So I've been doing this a really long time, and when it came time for me to switch teams at Amazon, I really wanted to work in open source because I had worked with open source but not on open source. And so this was a, a real cognizant decision for me to make this choice, and I'm very happy I did it. Thank you. Uh, I'm Sean Newman. I'm a software development manager on the open search team at AWS, and we both work at Amazon. Um, I specifically work on open search dashboards, which is the front end visualization tool. Um, and the other component that's interesting, I think, here is that I also work on the managed server side. So, in AWS, the operations of our managed service, specifically for our front end and uh, dashboards. Uh, I've been at Amazon for about nine years, and we're calling out our tenure specifically to highlight that. We are really ingrained in our corporate culture, and we're cognizant of that, and we're, we understand the biases that brings as we move into the open source, and we kind of wanted to talk about that today. So why are we here? So first, we would like to introduce everyone to the Open Search Project. Uh, it, we're still in our infancy, uh, and there's a lot to talk about and exciting things. Uh, tell you about what we've done in our first year, and share our mistakes, lessons learned, you a little bit about what we're planning to do next, uh, because as much fun as it is for us to look backwards, looking forward is, I don't know, what I get excited about. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we want to meet all of you. And um, if you don't find us in here today, we will be at the booth or somewhere around. Uh, please come talk to us. Uh, we have stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stickers, and I have to take them back to Seattle if we don't give them away, so I'm really motivated to give them away. All right. So, uh, first of all, what is Open Search? Uh, we are a distributed RESTful engine, uh, search engine, and analytics suite. Next. <laughs> <laughs> and primarily, we are open source and community driven. Uh, one of the things we'll talk a little bit about in a minute is about Amazon and tenants and how we think about problems. Uh, one of our core tenants is that we are an open source project first. Uh, and then we are Amazon second. So I wanted to highlight that in what's important to us. And uh, we just also want to call it, we are derived from Apache 2.0, Elasticsearch, and Kibana 7.10. Uh, so the major components of open, the open search project are the open search, uh, search engine itself, dashboards, which is the visualization tool for analytics. Uh, we have plugins and tools for advanced features, functionality, and clients, which allows you to connect to open search in the language of your choice. So I wanted to put this timeline up uh, to give you an idea of what we've done so far. Uh, and I also wanted to highlight that we're very, very new. It hasn't even been a year since our 1.0 release. So we started in January of 2021. And just for a little history, I came on the project uh, two weeks before uh, we announced that we were going to be forking. And I came on to do uh, visualization. And about two weeks after I started, uh, my boss at the time said, hey, would you like to work on the core engine? And I said, yes, very much. I'm very excited to work on that because it was a better alignment for things that I worked on previously. Um, and since then, we're going to go through in a little bit more detail about what we've done in these sort of two sections is everything we did before 1.0, like what it took for us to do the fork and what we released, and what we've done between 1.0 and 2.0. And then we'll talk finally about what's coming next. All right, this is you. <laughs> <laughs> so the part one, uh, road to 1.0. Uh, the first thing we did was fork. And then uh, remove proprietary software. So primarily this was moving everything that was in XPAC. Uh, and we did, it was a large amount of work. Uh, we removed about 650 pull requests and about uh, 54,000 lines of code. But mostly that period of time, when I think about it, our screens just looked like this. Like we were doing the renaming, it was a lot of conflicts as we went through and tried to get that up and running. 
yeah, that, that was the life for a while. So as I said, we did a bunch of excising of code. Um, and we were really happy when we got to that point because it gave us a very stable foundation to work from. Um, and it, uh, it allowed us to say, we're, we've got everything out that is not Apache 2.0 license, uh, and it gave us a place to build from. Yeah. So while 1.0 was really about forking, getting out there, uh, some stability, um, it didn't necessarily introduce anything new. So uh, 2.0 uh, was actually uh, really evolving from there. So the first thing is we, we had to get a lot better at releasing software. So uh, if you actually add all the patch releases, uh, we've had 13 releases since 1.0. <laughs> Thank you, Log4j. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Log4j. Uh, we continue to build community. So since the fork, we've had 191 out of our 401 contributors uh, to the project were not from Amazon. And that is a uh, very important thing for us is to continue to build that community. Uh, we added our first maintainers that didn't work for Amazon. And of course, Shout we Shout out features. to Ivan. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and so we, we have released a lot of features uh, and upgrades. Uh, a few notable things were Lucene 9.1, uh, Kubernetes Operator, Machine Learning Commons. Uh, we're in the process of replacing all the non-inclusive terminology. Very important to us. Um, RPM Packet Manager. So once we're, oh, I always like to call out that uh, the dashboards we we addressed over seventy security issues. Um, security's uh, job one for us. So what have we learned? So working in the open requires us to be cognizant of our corporate muscle memory. So. Um, at Amazon, we have very polished docs for executives. And uh, a really, if, if, if I have a great idea one day, uh, I need to write that down. And we have one pagers and six pagers and all these pagers, and we write it down. And I'll share it with my peers. Uh, I might say, hey, Charlotte, can you take a look at this? And she'll give me feedback. I'll update the doc, and then I'll review it eventually with my manager. And it will go up to my director and even VP. And uh, But by the time it gets to them, and I'm looking for a yes, we could build this, uh, it's really polished. We've, we have our story down. We have our metrics for success, the goal. It, it, it's polished. So that is a very Amazonian thing. Well, uh, that doesn't work in the open source. Uh, so in the open source, uh, we need to create GitHub issues that bring the community along for the journey, which means if I have an idea, I have the uh, freedom just to actually just post the initial thoughts on a GitHub issue. It's not polished, and that's a very big difference. Uh, another thing that we have had to really be cognizant of is how we handle internal escalations. So uh, at Amazon, if you have something that you don't agree with somebody and you realize that you're not going to be able to make a decision, it's very common practice for us to escalate it up very quickly, and you escalate it up through your management chain. In fact, I did a talk once called how to win friends and escalate things, right? It's not considered a bad thing. You just want to make sure that you can quickly solve it. So when we have things that we are trying to wrestle with internally, uh, particularly with our other internal teams, uh, they very much want to escalate things through our, through our internal channels. And we have to be very cognizant that we say, no, we need to take that out to the community, we need to discuss it, we need to get consensus, we need to build. That way we can't just make a call internally and say we're going to go. Uh, and I, there have been a couple examples of that. Um, one example is we have a feature called cross-cluster cross, cross replication, uh, which is a great feature. But the way that it was initially built um, by one of the internal teams at Amazon put uh, a bunch of uh, components into the core that only benefited cross-cluster. Uh, and it did not seem to us uh, on the open source side that that was the right way to go because it violated one of our tenants about making sure that we never privileged something coming in from AWS. So we went and uh, had a conversation with them and they started to escalate up. Uh, and we had to say, no, we need to take this out and talk about it in the community. And if you look in our GitHub forum, you can see us having that conversation in public uh, until we came to an agreement that we would release it with those components already marked deprecated and in the 1.1 version actually pull them into the right plugin and in the right spot. So this is a, that was an example of us 
sort of falling back on muscle memory and then making sure that we stopped and did it the right way. Yeah. So we're learn, learning as we're growing. Uh, we're being vocally self-critical along the way, uh, which is how we feel like we learn and grow. And uh, we're also giving ourselves a little bit of grace. So uh, uh, we're having fun doing it. So uh, how do we merge our best practices? So uh, why don't you talk about the Amazon best practices? So go ahead and throw them all up there, and I'll talk very quickly, because I want to try to make sure that we leave time for Q&A. And if we don't, I just uh, want to make sure that you know we'll be at the booth, and we're happy to, to talk about this. I love to talk about open search, so please come on by. Uh, so very quickly, things that, that Amazon does, uh, tenants I've mentioned before, they're basically statements that help you make decisions. One of our tenants is that uh, we work openly. So when we come to a decision point about whether or not we should uh, talk about something publicly or not, we go to our tenants and say, okay, we'll go more publicly. Uh, working backwards, uh, I'm sure you've heard of Amazon being customer obsessed, we go with what is the end point you want to work, be from, you want to get to and then work backwards from that state. Document culture, uh, Newman already mentioned. Uh, leadership principles, there are famously 17 of them. We think about them a lot. Uh, and we hold a very high bar. Uh, and that can be that can be very, very good, obviously, because we take things like security and code quality good, but sometimes that can uh, come into conflict with some of the open source pieces, so. Yeah, so open source best practices, uh, progress, not perfection, and that goes back to uh, the document writing and sharing ideas and, and growing. Uh, Code-driven collaboration, so showing, not telling. Uh, test early, test often. Uh, this is one we uh, definitely carry over from Amazon. Uh, open communication, and this is definitely where we're still building that, that, uh, the muscles for that. And we're not, a, uh, just don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, and uh, I think this is actually very Amazonian too, is uh, there's not a fear of failure. In fact, we encourage failing fast. And so take risks, fail fast. What did you learn? How do we move it forward? And asynchronous, and asynchronous collaboration. So if we were to visualize that, uh, it looks like this. Give or take, you know, shifting left or right. So uh, what's next? Um, so on the open source dashboard side, and if you go to our GitHub repo, uh, our uh, project on GitHub, and go into the uh, dashboards repository, GitHub issue 1405 covers a lot of this. But we're looking to make dashboards independent and decoupled, and a couple of the projects for that are uh, metadata storage adapter and security out of the box. Metadata storage is uh, today dashboards relies on open search uh, for its metadata, so we use the indexes. So if we wanted to not rely on that uh, or run independently, we'd have a metadata meta metadata storage adapter. You can connect to any database you like, and uh, a security out of the box, things like authentication. Uh, we're looking at heterogeneous data sources. So what if you want to visualize uh, not just open search, but other forms of data? So it could be Prometheus, it could be Elasticsearch, it could be um, whatever you like. Uh, and this single pane of glass. So a lot of the people we talk to, uh, they, they have multiple tools and multiple dashboards and different systems and different databases. And they want to, instead of switching to the different uh, applications uh, and dashboards, and, which they may or may not have access to, have it all on a single screen. So this is single pane of glass vision, where if we actually provide the ability to connect to multiple data sources and aggregate them together, create a much better experience um, for users. Uh, we definitely want to make dashboards more extensible. And of course, uh, a really big thing uh, is usability, accessibility, internationalization, and more visualization. So the experience work of dashboards is just beginning. Throw them all out there. Uh, whoops. So a couple things that I want to talk about that we're working on for Engine and looking at next. One is segment replication. Um, which is similar to what Yelp did with NRT. It takes advantage of Lucene 6.0's ability to copy segments. Uh, we've done uh, our preliminary proof of concept, and we were seeing about 35 to 40 percent uh, performance improvements. So we're incredibly excited about that, and I highly recommend take a look at 1694 uh, GitHub. I think that's great. Uh, extensibility. Uh, I am. I have this uh, bad habit of saying I'm very excited about each one of these things, but I'm very excited about extensibility. Uh, I really see this as an opportunity for us to do a couple of different things. One is around sandboxing and hardening for individual plugins to make it uh, easier for folks to extend the capability of open search without 
uh, running the risk of impacting their cluster. Uh, we also have uh, API versioning and looking at security for plugins. So I'm very excited about that piece. And the last one is remote storage. Um, when you add remote storage to SegRep, uh, it unlocks a whole bunch of different uh, ways forward for us that will allow us to do better specialization around what our nodes doing, which will allow us to scale more efficiently. So I'm really excited about all the stuff that we're working on. And a lot of that stuff will start to light up uh, in September for us as we either release 3.0 or a uh, major version in 2. So. Yeah, and um, if you're curious about a roadmap, uh, feel free to go to the GitHub project. Uh, we do post everything in the public. It does change as we get new information. Uh, if there's things on there you don't see, just ping us. Uh, we're we'll, we'll happy to clear that up. And um, if you're interested in contributing, uh, there's multiple ways to play. Um, we have forums, uh, events, <laughs> uh, blog posts, <laughs> documentation. Um, but uh, even if you want to just contribute a line of code or like a little thing, uh, it's we will double down on making sure that you're successful. So uh, uh, if you have an idea or you want to play around, submit a PR, we will uh, respond to it as quickly as we can, and it will be pretty quick. And um, if, if it's a great idea, we'll work with you to make you successful. That's very important to us. So thank you. Um, we only have a couple of minutes, so I don't know if we have time for questions or anything. So thank you, Charlotte and Sean. Anyone has questions? Might need to get down there. <laughs> yeah, I, um, it's about the extensibility because um, in the past with some other search engines, there was uh, you can could use a lot of internal APIs. So if you ver try to versioning things and sandboxing things, the question is how much can a third party vendor extend really the functionality on the scene? as a building new fields and such things. So are there any plans, are there any features or like outlooks, how it will be in future to build a plugin for open search? Thanks, that's a great question. And what I'll say is there are currently about 80 different extension points that are there in the engine. And one of the reasons that we want to be able to put them behind an API is that we have had cases where people have made assumptions about how things are implemented on the engine, and then we change those underneath, and you know the plugins break. Um, I think my my short answer to that is it's still a work in progress, and we want to make sure that there are some pieces that we would not want to change on the core functioning of the engine. We wouldn't want to extend. Uh, but the majority of places where it makes sense to be able to make extensions, we will do. So my recommendation is if you are interested in having input on which pieces we uh, make sure that we put extension points into to follow up on the issue. And I would love to talk to you about it there. Um, do you have an idea where would you like to take the project longer term to what it's going to involve? Well, I mean, other than being the best distributed search engine on the planet, uh, I'll, I'll say a couple of things. Um, one is that Newman and I are both engineers, and so we're going to be very focused on thinking about engineering. Uh, I think another topic that is important to us is about, is about governance and what that's going to look like. I'm going to focus on the engineering answer, um, because that's, those are the things that, uh, that you know, we're passionate about. Um, from an engineering point of view, uh, there is a uh, an issue on GitHub that's pinned to the top of the engine that talks about uh, themes for 2022 for engine. Uh, security is, is very important to me. I feel like that's an area that uh, we have a lot of opportunities to make improvements. Uh, we're very aware that we need to make sure that for our partners who are running services that they're able to implement their own security measures, but we want to make sure that it is easy and out of the box default secure. So I see that as a is very important for us long term. Additionally, extensibility, making it easy for people to uh, extend the platform, write their own extensions for it, uh, and having a catalog of those extensions, right? 
Um, and the third is around efficiency. Uh, I think that's one of the Achilles heels of open search is the scaling and how it scales out. So getting better at scaling out horizontally uh, and making that more efficient. So those are the things from an engineering point for engine that I'm looking at. Newman, do you want to talk about dashboards? Yeah, well, they're very common things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they'll be more experiential things. Um, yeah. um, really providing that heterogeneous data source. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and really accessibility. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give a big round of applause. Mm -hmm.